Hey guys, it's DC here and we have another episode of CyberSec News. This week we are looking at stories, POTUS impeachment malware, uh, Emotet uses coronavirus scare to infect targets, and iOS security updates. The TrickBot malware has been spotted using text from articles about President Trump's impeachment to bypass the scanning engines of security software. Before distributing malware, developers commonly use a cryptor to encrypt or obfuscate the malware's code to make it fully undetectable by antivirus software. One common technique used by cryptos is to take harmless text from books or news articles and then inject it into the malware in the hopes that the strings will be whitelisted as security software. In two new samples of TrickBot discovered by the head of Sentinel Labs, Vitaly Kremers, and security research malware hunter team, the malware developers are injecting text from an article about President Trump's impeachment into the malware. They've said the antivirus engines bypass focus on adding and appending known goodware strings to binaries in order to bypass static machine learning engines as similarly it was discovered and used by silent engine model. Known goodware strings might include news headlines like widely populated Trump impeachment news stories mixed with the actual and pseudo real applications that become appended to the malicious binaries by the malware crypto builder engine. So not exactly based on the POTUS impeachment thing, but um, basically just using text from that to then create uh, fake news inside malware, which is then becoming security software in the eyes of this AI driven software. Next story, a mail spam campaign is actively distributing Emotet payloads via emails that warn the targets of coronavirus infection reports in various prefectures from Japan, including Gifu, Osaka and Totori. To scare the potential victims into opening malicious attachments, the e spam emails camouflaged as official notifications from disability welfare service provider and public health centers promised to provide more details on preventative measures against coronavirus infections within the attachments. The Emotech gang is known for taking advantage of trending current events and approaching holidays by sending out targeted custom templates such as invites to a Greta Thunberg demonstration or to Christmas and Halloween parties. They're doing it again in the case of this campaign exploiting an ongoing global scale health crisis triggered by infections with the new 2019 novel coronavirus. According to reports from the InfoSec community, this campaign is using stolen emails from previously compromised accounts as a template to attempt and infect recipients with Imotet. However, others have pointed out that Japanese in the subject and file names is strange and that this looks more sophisticated than other Imitet distribution attempts. The subject of the emails as well as the document file names are similar but not identical. A report from IBM X-Force Threat Intelligent explains. They are composed of different representations of the current date and the Japanese word for notification in order to suggest urgency. So that's kind of interesting, I guess. They're basically using this virus to send emails out with attachments that are obviously full of malware. And yeah, that's it's it's not anything new. That's sort of been happening forever since uh, emails and malware existed, basically. So just the latest flavor, I guess. Next story. Apple's latest security fixes released on Tuesday tackle a wide range of bugs including several patches for high-risk flaws that could allow for remote code execution. Of particular interest to privacy-minded iPhone 11 users in iOS 13.3.1 update that includes new functionality that allows users to turn off U1 Ultra Wideband Device Tracking. Fixes addressed are vulnerabilities in Apple's Xcode, watchOS, Safari, iTunes for Windows, iOS, iPad, macOS, and tvOS, so basically everything that Apple owns. The most severe of the vulnerabilities included four remote code execution bugs in Apple's TV operating system, tvOS, each rated high severity. 
tracked as CVE 2020-3868, this TVOS RCE bug has a CVSS score of 8.8. That's massive. The highest rated bug among those patched on Tuesday. The bug is tied to multiple memory corruption issues in Apple's browser engine WebKit. By persuading a victim to visit a specifically crafted website, an attacker could exploit this vulnerability to execute arbitrary code on the system or cause a denial of service. Pretty hectic. Each of the other Apple tvOS code execution bugs have a CVSS rating of 7.8, still very high. Two of the RCE vulnerabilities are tied to ImageIO Python libraries tvOS and other to Apple's use of secure network protocol suite IPsec. So there's yeah quite a few things that have been fixed up here in the latest uh, updates to those Apple products but um, I guess the most noticeable one that people are going to actually make a change to is that uh, ultra wideband wireless setting that basically turns off device tracking on that person's device. So yeah, it's pretty interesting. As always, if you liked this video, don't forget to click like, subscribe for more, and leave a comment down below if you have any questions about any of these articles or suggestions for articles that I might have missed. Bit of news there for you. If you guys want to check out these articles, head on over to cybersecguidance.com forward slash blog. There's a whole list of articles there as well as uh, where I got these articles from. And uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.